This evening, I just want to shortly speak to you on the topic called the comparison trap. Somebody say the comparison trap. The comparison trap. And the scripture is 2 Corinthians 10, 12, and it says this from NIV. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who comment, commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise look at your neighbor say are you wise or should i look for another <laughs> uh, we all fell into this this trap of comparing yourself to somebody else yeah anybody's parents ever compared you to your older sibling or your cousin or somebody every day no. <laughs> yeah, my dad so every time you know in in this russian culture we have this thing that you compare yourself to your your cousins or whatever and every time like I remember when we were in our new house in our, in our house and it'd be like six in the morning dad would run into the to the room like it's nine o'clock you're sleeping your cousin already has three kids has a house and I'm like ah! I run out of the bed and it's like 6 a.m like dad it's not nine he's like get out of the house you know he's that's why I got married <laughs> I'm just kidding so that's not why I got married but you know, we always get scarred with this, your brother or your sister or your cousin or your uncle. We always, you know, in life, it's life like that. When we get compared to somebody else, you know, in a negative way, not the best way. And that begins to irritate us. Sometimes it makes you act out of character. Begin to, you know, not to be happy with who you are, what you do and everything that you have. And you're like, oh, you know, when I'll be them, I'll be happy. Everybody said, anybody ever said that? If I accomplish this one thing, uh, then I'll be happy. And that is the trap that Satan wants to put us in, is in this comparison trap. There is a, a healthy challenge to become better. But there is also a trap of Satan to begin to compare ourselves with something that is delusional. Something that is fake and something that is just it's a facade it's just not real God many times begin to challenge us and begin to say you know that I've made you whole I made you who you are I I am in love with you I'm jealous for you I've inscribed your name in the palm of my hands but yet the circumstances around us begin to tell us oh unless you are this skin tone you are not pretty unless you have this gpa you have not accomplished success unless you uh, make this amount of money you are not good enough unless you have this type of body you are not worthy enough and they label us and we begin to compare ourselves with ourselves or the circumstances that are around us and the bible clearly says that look if you begin to do that you're not wise and, and, uh, and also another scripture in Matthew 25 verse 14 and it talks about in this parable of a sower. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servant and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his own ability. That's something we have to understand. Everybody has a destiny in their life. You have dreams, goals that God has placed inside of your heart that are different from your neighbor. Just because your neighbor drives a Prius doesn't mean that you're driving on, on a transit. Your destiny is the same as the guy with the Prius or the guy with the Mercedes, the guy with the BMW. So it's just because somebody became a PhD at 18, doctor's degree and whatever degree that they have, doesn't mean you're a failure if you barely graduate high school. You cannot just begin to see somebody else who made it and everybody classified them. Oh, Joe made it. Jose got a lawnmower business and you, you know, he can't even wash my own car, you know. And you begin to be compared by your parents, by your friends, whoever it might be. And you label yourself as a failure because of this comparison trap that begins to take in our lives. I'll show you some scriptures, some stories from the Bible where people begin to compare themselves to themselves to their neighbors and tragic things begin to take place look at the story of Cain and Abel they begin to Abel begin to compare himself to Cain and, and and begin to see you know why am I not like this why my life is not working out like this and that led him to murdering his own brother 
If you see the story of Saul and David, Saul begins to lose his life over a song. Somebody's song sang a song that said David killed more people than Saul and that drive him crazy to pursue a guy that was protecting him with his own life. This comparison trap is very deadly. It can make you do things that you can that, that is just unspeakable of and that's something that I want to talk about tonight is what comparison does to us. One of the things is comparison takes away our contentment. Comparison takes away our, our satisfaction, our contentment. When you begin to compare yourself by yourself to people around you, you will never be satisfied because that comparison trap will take your peace and your joy that you have. Only God, our relationship with God gives that peace. But when we begin to compare ourselves, oh, he has made it. If I don't become like him, you know, I'll never be happy. Oh, if, if I don't accomplish, you know, summer body, summer body. Hey, you know, everybody's like hitting the gym so hard. If I don't get that summer body, you know, I'm not going to be happy with myself. I'm like, she's been relaxed. Eat some donuts. Life is good. <laughs> you know, hey, relax. Go. <laughs> I, I learned it. I, 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 got, I figured it out. I'm happy, you know. <laughs> Look at my closet today. I'm like, geez, what was I doing a year ago? Why is things so tight? Anyways, we will, never, we, will, we will never be satisfied if you begin to compare yourself to others. God has made you in a unique way. You have to understand and you have to know this. God has made you in the image of himself, not man. He didn't make you like John or like Barbie people name themselves Barbie these days right you know he didn't name you like Maria like Juan but you know like uh, Igor or Valentina or you know I'm just kidding <laughs> terrible name uh, I'm just kidding uh, you know he didn't make you like them he gave you a unique destiny each one of you God has placed a dream God has placed an abilities inside of you that he said you are the one to accomplish it not your neighbor just because your neighbor became a doctor doesn't mean you will be a doctor. Maybe you'll be a lawyer or maybe you'll be a doctor, but you'll be a doctor with a difference. Not just like a regular person. God has placed a dream. Maybe you're going to be a basketball, soccer star, a boxer, or be, you know, a banker. Whatever God has placed in your heart, he says, I want you to be that with a difference. I wired you differently. I made you differently. Your eyes, your skin tone, your color, your height, your weight. I made you different. You're not a cheap copy of some original. You are a unique product, fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> True satisfaction comes not from the things we acquire, but the relationship we maintain true satisfaction i'm going to repeat this this is this is this is good for me even it comes not from the things that we get not the materials things that we get but the relationship we maintain with our lord and savior jesus christ you will never be truly satisfied unless you taste jesus there's always be you know some people like you know oh if I can accomplish this you know they get to this point where they accomplish it and they're like well I need to accomplish it again because I'm not truly satisfied. Why so many people in Hollywood they, they reach the top and they begin to commit suicide because satisfaction doesn't come from the things that you acquire. It's from the relationship that you maintain with Jesus Christ. That is why internship this summer is really important. We want to ground you in your relationship with God. Before you pursue your career, which things are important and will teach you. And will teach you how to do it the right way. But remember, who builds himself his life on the rock. When storms and wind will come against him, they will stand. The relationship that you maintain brings the true satisfaction in life. Number two, comparison takes away our focus comparison takes away our focus it takes off our focus of Jesus Christ and puts our focus on ourselves and whenever you're focused on yourself man you are doomed to failure you're doomed to fail because we are men we make mistakes how many times did you say to yourself I'll never do it again and you begin to do that same thing that you've said a thousand times you'll not do it why because we're human we fail 
That's why Jesus says, look unto me. Look unto the cross because he's the author. He's the finisher of faith. He has done it. Jesus Christ is our focus. But when you compare it to your neighbor, you begin to see, oh, I'm not worthy enough. Oh, I can't do it the way he does it. No, I can't sing like he sings it. You know, when Malachi came, you know, I shake my faith a lot. <laughs> like, Malachi, please leave the place. <laughs> you know, for me, it was, it was, it was a reality check. You know, the one begins to sing and people in the crowd are like crying. I'm like, why didn't you cry when I sing, huh? And my ears hurt. I'm like, bless you, brother. <laughs> That's how I'll pray for you during a prayer line, you know. No. So, but that, they begin to, rea they begin to do reality check, you know. Well, why do you base your identity on? Is it on the voice that you have? Is it on the hair that will soon fall out? Pray to God it doesn't. Thank God for wigs, you know. <laughs> You know, is it on the, you know, some roles that you're going to get and just once you get married. The married man said amen. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Work on your body, please. Uh, but what do you base your identity on? Comparison takes away your focus. It's the people that always, that's what I notice in life. The people who take care of themselves the most are actually the people who are in majority of them are the most insecure. Who have the most perfect body that you think of or have the most perfect life that you are jealous of. Those are most of the cases. There are the most people who are insecure. They lose their house, you'll see they're in depression. They lose their body, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're walking around with the bottle because that's it. Everything, everything they had, they lost. You know, when Job it was the richest man in, in, in his whole area, he lost everything. Like, he lost everything that you can possibly think of. Yet, he didn't lose his relationship with God. And he said, you know, God gives, God takes away. Blessed be his name. Amen. But his wife that, you know, that, that, was, that thought, hey, we had all these things. Life is good. Everything is wonderful. When things were taken away from her, she was the one crying. Curse God. God wants us to focus on him, not, not on us, not on our neighbor, not, not on things that we can acquire. God says, look unto me because in me you will, you will find worth. You will find identity. You will know who you are in Christ Jesus. You will know that no circumstances can stop you. You know that you'll be on top and not a bottom. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. When, when our focus gets, gets taken away from us, we begin to fight out, out of failure and fear instead of victory. When our focus is stripped from us, we will fight out of failure and out of fear. Jesus comes and he gives and says, I've given you victory before you even got the victory. But when you fight out of victory, then you can have victory. When you fight out of fear, you're just, you know, it's like the 12, the, when the spies were sent to the promised land. They said, look, you know, God promised to us, but we're scared. And that's why they never entered that promised land. But the people said, look, God has given us the city. I don't care who is there. We're going to take it. They fought out of victory. When our focus is taken away from us, you will, you, anytime you get a pimple on your face, you, you'll go into depression. Use makeup. Come on. I actually got married. I figured out the, the thing. You know, you get a pimple. I'm like, babe, cover me up. Nobody knows. You know, but when I was 14, I get it. You know, I'm on stage. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like, God, everybody's looking at that pimple. What's going on, you know? And it's your identity is based on that. And how you look. And, uh, you know, you lose a fight. You lose something that you stand for and that's it. You're down. You're depressed. You're nowhere to be found. Your, your, your feed on Facebook begins to roll. Uh, you know, everybody left me. Backstabbers, blackmailers, you know, all these things. You're like, man, what is going on? You just got a flat tire. The world is okay. Just change it and move on. You know, that's, and that's what we have to understand. Our comparison, it strips us out of our focus. And not for, when we lose focus of Jesus Christ... We will begin to live in fear and in failure. And the third thing that the comparison does, it takes away our worth. Comparison takes away our worth. When you begin to compare yourself to others, you begin to belittle the things that you have. You know, um, I'm always shocked and surprised by the story of Nick, uh, Nick Foltz, you know, without limbs, without legs. If, if this guy were to compare himself to a normal human being and say, God, why would you make me like this? But if he would, you know, take his own life, which, you know, which in that position, you're like, man, I'm a mistake. God has forgotten about me. God has rejected me. Today, thousands of souls will not be saved through his life. 
He knew his self-worth. He knew who he is in Christ Jesus. And he's accomplished so many more things with people that have legs and that have hands. All the, their life living and, you know, in failure. Why? Because when you know your true worth, you can accomplish the destiny that God has placed in your hearts. It doesn't matter. God said when God created man in, in Genesis, he didn't, he didn't look at his physical disposition, the things that he had. He knew that he was creating a soul and you cannot measure a soul. You cannot measure a soul. Jesus died, has paid with his own blood for a soul. This shows you that, you know, we're not the skin stretched over a skeleton. We're not our accomplishments. We're not how we look. We're not, you know, how we speak, how we perform. Oh, I wish I could pray like Jacob. Oh, I wish I could drum like Zachy. I wish I could play like Dan. You know, all these things, you know, it's not the things that you do. It's the soul that God has placed inside your heart. The soul that God has created and said, you, I, I, I'm in love with you. The way you are, you know, before you even did anything, I formed you. I gave you, uh, you know, you became the apple of my eye. You became so dear to me. Even if you made a mistake, I still love you dearly. I've given my whole son, my begotten son for you because this is how much I loved you despite your weaknesses. Comparison strips us of our worth strips us of our focus and begins to uh, makes us look inward there's a few things that we compare ourselves to first thing we compare ourselves to people we begin to compare so when you compare yourself to somebody else you're basically telling God that God you created somebody that is not good enough when you compare yourself to a person to people around you maybe to to what your 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 parents has you know gave you a standard you know you should be like your brother you should be like your sister you know your uncle whatever whatever if you compare yourself they might say whatever they want but you still have the choice of determining who you are I'm not saying that you know hey pastor Martin said we don't have to care you know I'm laying off gym no we have to take care of ourselves we have to strive to be better out of the out of the inner hearts knowing who we are in Christ Jesus not out of fear not out of you know he did this and i need to do that he drove this car and i need to drive this car in order to be happy when you compare yourself to people that's one of the biggest things that we do is we compare ourselves to people and that's the comparison trap that satan wants to put us in it's good to have a future but not at the expense that your future kills your present it's good it's awesome you know that you know you see some people accomplishing awesome things like you know they 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 come to this you know uh, race with they run a marathon they you know they accomplish phd studying all these things but don't let their future somebody else's future come at the expense of killing your present you have to have goals you have to have dreams but don't let it make you act out of character know who you are in christ jesus amen somebody say i am the best me Someone, I want you to say it loud. I am, I am the best me there ever was and there ever will be. Come on, if you believe it, put your hands together for Jesus. Get it. No, no. Comparing yourself with the future. That's, that's the second thing that, that people compare themselves with. They set dreams, they set goals, they set accomplishments, and they begin to, and they begin to, look down on by themselves you know they let's say this year they said you know I'm gonna lose uh you know I'm gonna pay off all the debts and they paid off only half and they begin to they begin that their goal that they set for themselves yeah it's fine you know dream for the stars aim for the possible and you'll reach maximum but not at the expense of tarnishing your presence you know I see some people come in and you know I begin to talk to them and they're like uh you know I feel like a failure you know I didn't accomplish this you know I got fired from this job and this like that I'm like bro know who you are know what God has given you everything that your hand touches will be blessed everywhere that you will every time you walk in you'll be blessed every time you walk out you'll be blessed that is who you are not your circumstances I know you're reaching to maybe finish high school and maybe you failed I don't know why but that's not who you are your future is great awesome goals things that you that you can stretch yourself but let that be an encouragement to become better out of knowing who you are in Christ Jesus that you're not a failure, that you're a victor, that you'll be on top and you'll not be on bottom, that you're fearfully, wonderfully made, that everything that comes against you, every weapon that is formed against you will not prosper. 
That is the revelation that you have. And out of victory, then you begin to build your future. Amen, church? And the last thing people compare themselves to is their past. There's two ways out of past. Your past can help you or it can destroy you. You have to understand that part. Jesus and, and God begins to come to Israel. He says that remember where I've taken you from. So you can be thankful for what you have now. But there's some people who begin to remember what they came from and they begin to be stuck where they came from. Oh, the best days are behind me. Oh, remember the party days. Oh, I remember these fun times that I have. And they begin to curse the present. Every time you begin to think about your past, you cripple your ability to think and to act in the present. Remember this. Every time you begin to take yourself in the past, you remember the past. You glorify the past. Oh, things were great in the past. Oh, you know, everything was awesome. You cripple your ability to think to act and to exercise faith in the present. God says, remember and be thankful. God has taken me out of drugs. God has taken me out from stealing. God has taken me out from a moral lifestyle. God, I thank you for what you brought me to. God, I know it might not be the promised land yet, but I thank you I, not, I am not where I used to be. You know, I might not be all there yet, but I am not where I used to be. I used to be lost. I used to be depressed. I used to be on drugs, all these things. But God, I thank you for taking me out of my past. Your past can cripple your mind. Your past can take away the, the, the time where you can say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've given me. You know, man, I've heard many times people say, oh, back in the day, we had this awesome time. You know, we were on fire for Jesus Christ. So, look, so where is it now? Oh, I'm just going through a wilderness. But no, bro, it's, you know, the past is there to encourage you that God is faithful. The past is to encourage you to say that God's mercy is good. That you begin to say, you know, through the valleys and through the mountaintops, I'll still serve God. I'll still run after God. Let your past be encouragement and not a disqualify for you to act in the present. Amen, church? And some practical steps before we, we finish with this. I just want to give you some practical steps. How to overcome comparison. This, this, this works for me a lot. Number one is thank God in every situation. You have to learn how to thank God in every situation. This is, this is one of the biggest key because life will throw curveballs. You can be broke, you'll have problems. You can be middle class, you'll still have problems. You can be rich, you'll still have problems. You can be the ultra rich, you'll still have problems. In every season of your life, you need to learn. I have food on the table or I don't have food on the table. Blessed be his name. You got to learn how to, you know, you drive and you get pulled over. The cop gave you a ticket. You weren't even speeding. You know, you got to learn how to thank God in that situation. Yes, you made a mistake. Learn how to thank God. There's, God says, I'll make all things work together for good for those who love him. All things more to you. Yes, Satan might use, you know, a betrayal, a backstab. Maybe, you know, Joseph's brothers betrayed him. They lied against him. They sold for him. You know, but he failed on, held on to God and said, God, whatever season that I am, I know you're in control. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. And you are in control. Learn how to say, thank you, Jesus. You may be sick in your body. Begin to say, God, I thank you for healing. Learn how to begin to raise your hand in good times and, and bad times. God, blessed be his name. Number two is realize that God is jealous about you. God, God is madly in love with you and there's nothing that you can do to stop it. He loves you so much. The you with the mistakes, the you, you know, the, the, the skin tone, the color, the, the accomplishment, the, 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 the failures, the things that you're going to. God says, I am a jealous God. Don't worship anybody else because I'm in love with you. I love you so much. Whatever you've done before you've even given your life to Jesus, I already, I already gave my son for your salvation. I loved you so much, yet you were sinners. I formed you in your mother's womb. I inscribed your hand on the palm of my hands so I will not forget you. I made you the apple in my eye. I knew you would fall. I knew you will make mistakes but I loved you and there's nothing that you can do to stop that. And the last one is that whenever you see something or someone succeeding where you want to be, in order for that jealousy not to kick in, go up to them. Congratulate them. Hey man, I'm truly happy for your success. You know, if you see Brian's winning souls and you never won one in your whole life, come up to him and say, hey, 
I am, I am blessed to have you in my life. Can I learn from you? That's, that's one of the quickest way jealousy lives like this. I've seen it so many times. I'm like, this is somebody accomplishes, you know, certain things. And you're like, you know, you're like, man, I've been doing it for years and years. And this guy comes along just one time and it, and it just took place. And, you know, God, why? And you know, like begin to compare. What is he doing? Is his hairstyle? Is he Russian, Mexican, American? What is going on with this guy? No, go up to them. Congratulations. You know what? I'm so honored to have you in my life. Can I learn from you? And then envy, jealousy begins to leave. And God's like, instead instead of instead of you being destroyed by this comparison trap god begins to empower you and surround you with people in your life that begin to help you to accomplish destiny thank you for watching this content i hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come